In 2006 a dynamic dance duo formed to take on the world. This Anglo-Australian partnership promptly traveled the globe, learning from the masters of dance. If no one else has the answers, and if you can find them, maybe you should get in touch with Dizzy Feet. If you've got the questions, we've got the answers. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. We were echoing beautifully. Oh, we were echoing on that as well. How are we echoing on that? Am I still echoing? Ah, uh, that's got to be turned off. I don't know what that's still there for. So, am I still echoing, everyone? Hopefully I wasn't echoing too much before that. How are we all? I'm on my own at the moment. Kelly decided just before we came on to hang some curtains. Literally just before. Because, uh, yeah, a minute before we came online, she decided to hang some curtains. That we had to wash because a silly dog decided to wee on them. So there we go. Wonderful. So that'll teach us for having long curtains, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Where was it echoing, Ros? Because I, I like to know these things so that I can fix it for future. What was actually echoing? I'm looking at the wrong camera. Look at that one. I should be looking at that one. Good evening. Good evening, Hungry Hawks. Good evening, all. Good evening, YouTube. Good evening, Facebook. Good evening, Sigrid. Good evening, Margaret. Good evening, Mother. Good evening to you all. Yeah. So I hope you're doing well. Hope you're all okay. We're okay apart from dogs weighing on curtains. Uh, it could be worse, I suppose. It could be, it could be one of us weighing on the curtains. That would be worse, wouldn't it? Really. Probably a lot worse. Yeah, a lot worse. Good evening, Baps. Good evening. Good evening. Ros, you haven't answered my question. Where was it echoing? What was the echo in? Can anyone answer that question? So I know I'm echoing now, but what was echoing before? Because I don't want it to happen again. Hello, Blenworth Beauties. Good evening, Jonathan Latter. Okay, well, if you're not going to answer me, we'll just crack on, shall we? So what's, uh, what's pressing this evening? What do you want to talk about? What questions do you want to ask? I know one couple... Uh, had uh, had mentioned to me that they were going to uh, write a long list of questions to ask me this evening. So whether they're still sober enough to, to actually ask those. Thank you, Roz. It's very nice of you to say that about our dancing photos. But where was the echo? <laughs> You're not answering the question. Hello, Sarah Ball. Good evening, Ray. Obviously, I'm not going to get any straight answers, am I? I'm not going to get any straight answers about that at all. So, yeah, so um, go ahead, ask your questions. Ask away. So, it's got the fancy light going on in the background again. Don't have an echo as you're on my TV. Good. Well, there's no echo now, as far as I know. Before that, there apparently was. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, so what have we all been up to since Wednesday, if you join me on Wednesday? Hopefully that was useful. Get a little bit of uh, fun with the Paso. I know some of you never done it before, so that was uh, something exciting. Uh, it's always very difficult to do um, something exciting on a Zoom class like that. It's difficult, isn't it? Especially when on a carpet in your living room or your hallway or your dining room or whatever. It's always very tricky. I've written a list today of videos that I need to record, so I've been a little bit, um, I've been a little bit lax this week in doing stuff. It's been a difficult week, so uh, I'm trying to get myself motivated to do some videos. So I've got some, I've got a very big project that I did some work on yesterday, um, some testing, 
stuff. So that's that looks exciting. Kelly liked it, Ella liked it, and uh, my mum saw it as well. And she thought it was quite amazing. If you if you're listening, mum, don't spoil it by telling them what it's about, okay? Because they um, are not supposed to know yet. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Um, how easy is it to teach and learn Paso? As it's very difficult from other style, different from other styles. Um, I don't think it's any more difficult than than uh, than the other dances. In in some respects, I think it's easier. I think it's easier because there's not a lot of footwork to to have to learn about it. Well, there's rise and fall in certain respects because you've got certain steps that are on heels, certain steps that are on toes, uh, but you haven't got. Um, it's generally quite um, self-explanatory if you're moving forward, generally speaking, run a heel. I just think it's the attitude, the mindset, really, of Paso Doble. Posturally, it's a little bit different, but um, anything's easy, really. It, it's the way in which you teach it, the structure, the way the way you go about it, really. Um, I, I don't think... The, the one dance that is tricky to do technically correct is samba, and I think you'd agree, wouldn't you, Kelly? Yes. It's, uh, it's good evening from her. It's good evening from him. Oh, Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily overly difficult. Would you say the Paso Doble is difficult to teach and learn? Um, the s- steps-wise, usually not, but what is is um, like a lot of the shaping and stuff, isn't it? It's just a bit different. It's just a, it's just yeah. a different style the, the of dance. The postural dancing. elements are, um, take a bit more work. It's not not as easy as just standing up. Well, you know, that's not easy. At, so at the, find your at the, sock. Because I changed the at the because I'm running out to the shop, aren't I? I'm put the video on. Can't go to the shops in these big fluffy things. Uh, it's like anything though, really. It, it's every dance is as easy or as difficult as you want to make it, and that's that goes to when you're learning as well. Because yeah, um, a teacher can overcomplicate anything. Yeah. And they can also very nicely simplify things to make it easier. Yeah, uh, a basic paso steps wise is quite simple. Isn't yeah. It? Mm. Yeah. Mm. It one of the problems with paso is you don't do it a lot. So it's not mm. it's not a, a dance that's done a lot socially, really, uh, and it's, it's a bit alien. Yeah, and uh, quite often you'll do competitions if you're a competition dancer. You just have you'll have the four Latin dances, and you won't have Paso at all. So it's a dance that's neglected a little bit, like the Viennese waltz, um, for different reasons. But um, yeah, so I don't think it's overly difficult, Sarah. Perhaps you should have a lesson with me in Paso, and we can I'll show you how easy it can be. <laughs> Alan Pearson, are we there yet? I, where are we going? I, well, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> Can I've I come? Be, I've <laughs> been there for ages. Yeah. Unfortunately, no one else is with me. Wow. Oh. That's the trouble. So I'm kind of there on my own. I think Alan, you're with me, um, and I know you're definitely with me, but not a lot of other people are with me. <laughs> and that's the trouble. That's are you with me? We're kind of on our own, and then you know, when you're out on your own, there's not a lot you can do. Mm. So there we go. Oh. What? 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 Well. What's Someone sent a message and that went off, didn't it? Oh, okay, you've quite enjoyed it. Oh, they've, they've taken a picture and sent it to you. This is questions. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Blameworth Beauties, what is wrong with you? I think they take it a look quite seriously. Buddy, that's enough. He's having a tantrum, I think. Um, your first question, I can I take. Your third question... It's not too bad. Your second question, it's not important, but um, okay. So I've had three questions sent through. Why do they refer to ballroom dancing as standard? Because they're stupid. (laughs) Because they're stupid. So some people won't understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. in dance, in our world of dancing, we have ballroom dancing and we have Latin American. Latin American used to be... uh, encapsulated let's say or under the same umbrella as ballroom dancing so ballroom dancing also meant cha-cha samba rumba paso jive as well but really it's it's got its own identity which i think is fine latin american dancing ballroom dancing it's yeah. fine uh, but for some reason people uh, internationally in a competitive environment decided to call ballroom standard i have no idea I, I really do because it's t- t- as far as I'm concerned, it's not standard. It's proper. It's it's not just standard. It's yeah. something special. So it's not standard at all. I really don't know why they came up with it. I, I think it's possible because they wanted to differentiate between ballroom dancing, which was everything, uh, and separate the two. So it was standard, 
international standard and international Latin American. Mm. So I think that's perhaps where it came from. Yeah, but again, standard You is... don't like it because you feel like it, it, it puts ballroom down a yeah, bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not standard yeah. at all. And when I'm, <laughs> Whenever I do, I've done a competition abroad, one of the pro-am comps, and they'll announce standard, I always very loudly say ballroom. And if ever I'm judging a comp abroad and they say standard, I shout very loudly ballroom. <laughs> I, I don't care who hears me. It's ballroom. It's not standard. It's, it's special. Anyway, there we go. Um, thank you very much, Sarah. So I haven't gone into a lot of detail about the Paso, obviously. So there's, a, there's lots of detail, but you want to simplify these things. You've got to get it and be able to do it and enjoy it. That's the most important thing, isn't it? Not um, to overcomplicate it. <coughs> that is enough, young man. I've all worked up over a cushion. Is that cushion not behaving itself? It's not where you want it to be. Hmm. Is it because it's fallen down? I think so. <laughs> he's, he's, he's really grumpy. He is really grumpy, isn't he? He is really grumpy. I think he's grumpy because I, I topped him off. Uh, Ray, Ray has sent a message through, a question through, and it's, uh, do you know what dance Bruce Lee was a dance champion in? I do. He was the Hong Kong Cha 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 champion. Back in 1960-something, I think, or maybe late 50s, early 60s, I'm not sure. Here's a top t little fact, unknown fact. Uh, Kai Widrington, who is a dancer, backing dancer on Strictly now, who used to work with us. Uh, some of you will know him, some of you know of him perhaps. Some of you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. Anyway, his grandfather went to school with Bruce Lee in Hong Kong. There you go. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty cool. Do you not know that? No, I've seen the photograph of them uh, in the school photograph together. Oh, wow. cool. Daddy, come You'll on. have to put him in out the garden. Chuck him out the windows open. Chuck him out the window. <laughs> Stop it. Good evening, Yana's Fashion. You tuned in as well. Um, so there we go. That's what he was champion of. So there's a there's a little interesting uh, question or answer for you. He's got himself all worked up. Did now. you like your set? Here? Oh, you're talking about Alan, Alan's talking about him biting away, chomping away at it in the background. Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um. Yeah. The set, the, yeah, the setting it's, itself is just a little sofa. It's just a very like cheap Ikea. sofa bed thing that's not very good. Um, so we're not too worried about that. And these are these are not special pillows or sofas, so it's not a problem. He can, But I don't really want him chewing it because it'll no. smell. Like he pooed in here the other day and it still stinks. And I've tried to clean it and it hasn't worked. He had a bad, I'm not impressed. A bad case of um, yes. the runs. <laughs> uh Right, so uh, Ros has answered, uh, asked a question. Is dancing in heels... Hang on, I'll read that again. Is dancing in heels change dancing much different... Okay, I think she might have written the same thing twice. Is dancing in heels much different to dancing in heels on practice shoes? Um, you can ask that question because you, you're a girl. Depends on the shoe. So, um, yes, basically, generally. So a ballroom shoe is very different to a Latin shoe and then practice shoes... <laughs> which are, um, you can do both in are, are different to both of those though as well so yeah it is different I mean um, I teach in my teaching shoes all the time and uh, if ever James and I have a dance together well then I wear those as well because they're far more comfortable obviously I wear the proper ballroom shoe when we do a show or something um, but now it doesn't really bother me but I know like sometimes it used to that change from one shoe to the other used to used to just notice the difference until you got used to it but um, now it doesn't really bother me just putting my ballroom shoe on although they're not as comfortable um, although the Ray Rose ones are pretty comfortable actually um, but yeah my feet aren't as tough as they used to be so if I haven't got tights on I might get the odd blister there you go. But yeah, all the shoes will feel a bit different, for sure. But I think if you're not used to wearing heels at all, if you're typically wearing flat shoes, <laughs> you will find then the heels, you're going to find it yeah. very difficult. So particularly you? Latin shoes, because um, you, tend to, you tend to need a higher heel when you do Latin. Um, so my ballroom shoe is only two inches, which wouldn't be high enough for a Latin. So uh, I would, if I put Latin shoes on now, I wouldn't like it very much. I, I would struggle. I wouldn't like it very much either. I'd yeah. be all over the shop. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it does take, yeah, if you're not used to wearing a heel, you have to just put them on and get used to them. You know, you have to adjust your balance and, yeah, mm. toughen your feet up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Margaret's looking forward to getting up when we do the Latin leg action video because she hasn't got off the sofa all afternoon. You lazy I've, devil. I've been lazy as well today. No, I've been lazy all week. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a bad week. 
It's a bad, yeah. Yeah, mm. had a bad week. There was another question from Blenworth Beauties because they're just a bit nuts. So one of the questions that I'm going to answer uh, is when a dance is referred to as a swing dance, what is meant by the word swing? So swing is movement from a fixed point with acceleration. That's the definition of swing. However, it's not easy to put that into dance because your fixed point is constantly changing. It's a complicated topic, um, but uh, t realistic, essentially a swing dance is a dance that has what we would call swing, which, will incl which includes then a dance with rise and fall and body flight, because you can't have swing without those. There you go. So a swing dance is a waltz, it's got body flight, rise and fall. Foxtrot, body flight, rise and fall. Different though, obviously. Watch the videos. Uh, quick step, again, the same body flight and rise and fall. Viennese waltz also has that. So you you swing the leg in those swing dances from the hip because that is the fixed point. The hip is fixed mm -hmm. to you. So you can swing underneath. So there's a pendulum swing from the fixed point, which is the hip joint, ball and socket joint. So it can obviously rotate and do all sorts. But in this context, it's going to swing from a fixed point and then it swings into position and then the whole process happens again. We move, however, across the floor metronomically. So the fixed point when we move is on the floor. So we fix our foot to the floor and then we move across that, which is a metronomic swing. We then have a pendulum swing of the leg underneath. A bit complicated. So um, you may have heard of a pendulum swing in dance, uh, but it doesn't apply to us as a person. It, it's part of our body. Uh, and then you use sway to counterbalance and... Um, to counterbalance uh, sw uh, um, sway and rotation to counterbalance that swing of the leg. Yeah, but we don't move in a pendulum fashion across the floor. We move in a metronomic way across the floor. Hopefully that answers your question, Blenworth Beauties. Did it answer your question? You can answer. You can respond somewhere, somehow, sometime, if you like. <laughs> and if anyone else has got another question, it'd be great. There are swing dance styles in Lindy Hop. Yep, I'm sure there are as well, Alan. I don't. I'm not familiar with those. Uh, so the swing meaning there might be slightly different to how it is with um, with with us in ballroom because when we talk about swing we are specifically talking about the leg swing because nothing else can swing can it Kel? No. No. They can swing your arms. Like this. You can of course but we don't allow to are we? But we don't do that. No we're not allowed to. The There was another question there was a third question that Blenworth Beauty asked <laughs> which was can you explain how rule 11 of skater system works? No, <laughs> not to you now, online no, because it will bore the tears out of people and uh, really it's only you, Julian, that's interested because you, you're hung up on, on results and uh, marks, <laughs> so it's not, it's not important. Basically, it's, uh, it's just you count how many first someone has, how many seconds, how many thirds, etc. You back, go backwards. So, you know, in a comp, basically, when you do a competition, they use the skater system. So basically, it's a majority system. So there's, if there's five judges, you've got to have a majority of three to get the place. So uh, if there's five judges and there's three couples, uh, there's me, Kelly, and Buddy. Uh, Buddy gets um, three firsts, and I get two seconds, and Kelly gets five, five uh, thirds. She's third. I'm second. Buddy's first. If, uh, however, uh, I get, uh, I get two firsts, two seconds, and a third. And Kelly gets two firsts and three seconds. She wins because she's got um, three seconds. And I had a third, you see. So that's basically what it means. Rule 11 is that. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would TikTok be a media for showing some fun dance moves by you and Kelly? Generate three million views. If only. If only to generate three million views. Um, I'm not sure. I've not in. I've not looked into TikTok, Sarah. I don't even have TikTok. No, so. we neither of us ever have TikTok, so I don't yeah. think we're um we're young enough for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not sure. It's uh, it's for me really. I don't know. I don't think about it because obviously every revenue stream, any any anywhere we can get our information out there is an opportunity. Works, yeah, really. I tell you what though, talking about online videos, I'll think about it, Sarah. I'll have a look. Um, we are close to 3,000 subscribers now on our YouTube page. I know, I know it's quite impressive, isn't it? We have currently got, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to tell all the lovely people at home how many we've currently got. I'm going to turn that down just in case it makes a noise. Um, 2,900 and something. 
We've got, oh come on, there's so many little buttons to click and press. You could talk while I'm doing this and no, I'm having waffle and fill up time. It's okay. Yeah. We've got 2,959 subscribers on our YouTube channel, so we need 41 more subscribers to get to 3,000. So if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do, please do, it's very helpful. The more subscribers we get and the more likes we get and the more comments we get on all of our YouTube videos, the better that is. It pushes us up the rating, so to speak, mm. and the search engines, so more people look. The yeah, more people that look the more ad revenue we make, because I recently made it, well, 14 or so months ago, I monetized our YouTube page so we can make a bit of money. And next week, we're going to get our first check from YouTube <laughs> for 14 months' worth of videos. How much is it, Kel? Do you remember? Know, it was it 60 pounds? 63 pounds. 63 pounds. <laughs> 63 pounds. But uh, it's, it, it, it goes up quite exponentially. So once you get to a, quite a few, uh, once you hit certain milestones, and certain likes and that sort of thing, it just kind of exponentially goes up and up and up because you get pushed up to the search engines and things. So it becomes uh, it becomes much better for us because more and more people see the videos and then it just yeah. you know just grows. So if you haven't already, please do. That would be super duper. I'd be very help, very happy to if you could do that. I know you're already helping us a massive amount anyway, but yes, if you can, that'd be great. We've got um, we've got. Um, I, w I, mean, I wish I'd monetized it when I first blimmin' did it. Yes, that would have that made a lot more sense. But I mean, a lot of the videos we've got on there have music uh, playing as well, so from the dance shows that we've got. Uh, so we can't monetize those because they've got other people's copyrighted music ah, in there, yeah, so we yeah. can't. Uh, but we've got over 2 million views, which is great. I remember when we hit 1 million, actually, mm. and I didn't think then to monetize it. I don't know what was wrong with me. I'm just an idiot. Sometimes I'm just a bit of an idiot. Hmm. I'm going to be a maverick, but I'm not. I'm an idiot. Stop it. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, audience, what has it got? Where are they? Where we go? Oh, where's it gone? There's just too many things here. I found it the other day. I don't think you need to know. Well, 2.1 million. 2.1 million. So that's not bad, mm. is it? That's all right, isn't it? But we could do with that on one video. That'd be yes, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Then it'd be worth something, wouldn't it? Then it would be worth something, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so 14 months worth of uh, YouTube videos and activity has accrued £63. Aren't we lucky? <laughs> you buy yourself something pretty. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alan. Alan's just subscribed. Thank you ah, very much. there we are. So see? let me just see if that's ticked over. No, it hasn't ticked over yet. Did I say 200,000? Did I don't know. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so we've got... We need 40 now. 40 to get to 3,000. I'll do a special video when we get to 3,000. Might even do a giveaway. Don't know how we got anything. How do we subscribe to the YouTube page? What we do, watch the videos. Uh, you just literally go to our page on YouTube and just click subscribe. So if you go to the... Uh, yeah, there should be a There should subscribe. just be a subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, if you go to the, the channel. So you, I, I can and view you, the channel. And if you want a notification every time we upload something new, you, you click the little the bell. bell. There's yes. a little bell. The little bell icon. Bell icon, yeah. Yes. There should be a button to see it as... Um... It's hard to say, actually, because I only yeah. ever do it on my phone. So if you're on your phone... Um... <clears throat> I can't remember how to do it. No. Anyway, basically, when you go to it, it should say subscribe. And then you just click the subscribe button, and then it's there. So that would be wonderful if you can. That would be super duper. But I think you've got to have a YouTube account, haven't you? Probably. Yeah, you've got, yes. to, have, you've got to set up. Well, it's just a Google account. So I'm confident most people have a Google account. If you haven't, then well done. Avoiding a Google account all this time. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Do we get royalties for our American Smooth? No. No, you don't. No, no, you don't. You, you did that at the kindness of your heart. And to be honest... Uh, your American Smooth doesn't generate any income at all, Blenworth Beauties, because uh, it's got uh, copyrighted music. <laughs> so if you came up with your own music, you would get your own royalties, but unfortunately, because... Um, That's the hard thing, isn't it, about uh, dance-related stuff, isn't it? Like it well, yeah, it is. It. Yeah. Well, if it's a short clip, I had the, the video I've just put up from Wednesday, which was the uh, recap video, mm -hmm. I used... Um, you didn't see it, did you? But I put up some clips in there of because mm. um, I was talking about Bucks Fizz and I was talking about Agadoo. 
Yeah. So I put up little clips of Agadoo and Buck's Fizz. Yeah. Little mini clips, very very short brief, but understand. seven seconds. Yeah. Seven seconds. I understand. Seven seconds. But it pulled up a copyright claim mm -hmm. because I'd used a part of a song that's copyrighted. But yeah. I was able to dispute that and said I was using it for comparison purposes against things we were doing and they, they let that go. So that's okay. Oh, okay. So the video is still monetized. But if you put the whole thing on there, I don't no, know, it might be difficult. Um, I could they... I could go through and try and um, Sorry. Uh, dispute all of them, but there's an awful lot of videos to dispute. Yeah. And I think it's tricky. It's tricky, I don't uh, Tricky, yeah. Wonderful, thank you, Jonathan. Marvellous. Another one, another one. We're only 39 now. Yeah. Thank you, Renata. She already did, but she'll share the info you deserve for everything what is the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> you too. You too. And everyone should, uh, should follow uh, Yana's fashion as well for some wonderful creative design ideas and clothes and dance clothes and all sorts. Now, I think we should move on with the video, mm -hmm. shouldn't we? Move on with the video that... Um, Message wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, uh, wonderful. Roz has just messaged those of you that aren't following it on the WhatsApp chat, but Roz has just realized that she was watching last week's video that had a echo. It did have an echo, but it <laughs> so she hasn't been watching us. No, she's not she even oh, watching Roz. the recorded video, not the live video, which is uh, that's um, that's yeah, funny, wonderful. That's quite uh, that is uh, amusing. I'm not going to go over what we've already said for the last 25 minutes, but uh, you <laughs> can least... watch this on catch up. You can catch up again on this, Roz. At least, uh, yeah. Okay, At Alan, I'll bear that in again. mind. I'll go through and see what I can do. Um, the difference with our videos, Alan, to yours, you're actually playing the music. Yeah. Our videos are the original tracks being used, different. so that's the difficulty a little bit, I think. So. Uh, I'll see. Some of them I know I have disputed, and they, we get mutual. Um, we share the royalties, but I'll have a look because that'd be great, of course, if I can go through and do that. Mm. But um, it's something, isn't it? It's yeah. an awful lot of work. I could hire. I should hire a lackey for that. <laughs> right. Okay. So we're going to move on now with the uh, little video, the uh, Latin American leg action video. I will tell you this from the outset. I'm very, very disappointed in this video because. Normally, I get Kelly in there to make sure I'm in focus and check the camera's set up and everything, and then I get her to leave the room. However, I decided to do it all myself this time and thought I'd cracked it. However, I didn't, and I'm, out, I'm slightly out of focus uh, throughout the whole video. Now, for me, that's very frustrating, very frustrating, especially with what I've got planned for these videos later. So I'm very annoyed because it's not 100% uh, quality, so I'm, I'm gutted. However, you can still see that the, the information, I'm, my voice is quite clear and all that, so I'm sure you'll still get something out of it. Well, I hope so anyway, uh, but uh, it's not quite up to the same perfect standards that you're used to from Dizzy Feet Dancing. I do apologise at this juncture. <laughs> so I apologise from the outset. So anyway, here we go. I'll pop it on now. It's a little bit longer this week. Uh, it's an hour and 35 minutes. It's not. It's just just under forty minutes long. This one, so it's a little bit longer than the last couple of weeks that we've been doing. So, uh, enjoy, see how you like it, and we'll come back just after, and we'll have a little chat, and you can tell me all about it. <laughs> you can tell me all about it and what you thought. All right. See you soon. Bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode six of my Learn in Thirty. This time we're talking about leg action once again, but in the Latin American dances. So we've got five Latin American dances to look at. The cha-cha and the rumba have a very similar movement across their dancing in the base actions. The samba is quite unique. The jive, again, is quite different. And the paso doble also has its own distinct look and feel and way in which you would move from foot to foot. So we'll look at the basic actions in the cha-cha and the rumba to start with and how your legs should work to make your dancing more beautiful. Basic actions in the rumba and the cha-cha are essentially centered around a walk, a movement forward, backwards, left or right. So that's what we're going to look at to start with. So walking forwards or moving the leg forwards in uh, the cha-cha 
or the rumba. It's pretty much the same. The ending of the cha cha, of course, is different. You'll have a cha 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 action, but the process to get to that is the same in both dances. So I think at this, at this stage, you, you all know that in Latin American, we have much straighter legs than we do in, in the ballroom dances. Now in ballroom, we've always got soft knees, soft joints, ready to use them to produce leverage and movement. The Latin is slightly different. So we're gonna have locked legs, strong locked straight legs at certain times. Uh, so it gives it a distinct look difference, of course. So it's very different, of course, to the, to the ballroom movement. Uh, so to start with, we're gonna, we're gonna start here on two straight legs and I'm just gonna move forwards. So I'm standing on my left leg, it's nice and straight. I've got my nice skinny jeans on today so that you can see the movements beautifully, easily. I haven't got any Latin trousers anymore, of course, or Latin dance shoes, so you'd have to make do with these ones. So I'm on a nice straight left leg. Now, when I move forward, the right leg is gonna go forward now. I'm gonna pull, I feel like I pull backwards through the standing leg, which is this one. I'm pulling back and I feel like a bow and arrow feeling as I'm moving. So the left hip's gonna go out. I'm then gonna bring the knee of the moving leg forward. And then the whole leg itself goes out in front and then I transfer weight from the back leg to the front leg. Nice and smoothly. Two straight legs at this point. I'll do it the other way around. So I'm standing on the left leg. I'm gonna drop into my hip on my left leg here. If I do it this way around, you'll be able to see better actually with the hip action, hopefully. So I drop the weight into that hip. This leg is staying straight. I feel like I push the leg backwards almost as well. I relax into that hip and in doing so, I release the heel of my moving leg and as the other leg passes, so as the left leg is beginning to pass, the right leg, the tip of the toe is in contact with the floor, the heel's nice and high, the knee is, is very, very bent here, of course, you can see hopefully that, that sharp angle between my legs. So I've pushed this hip down, I've relaxed this knee forward, and then that leg straightens, it goes out in front of me, I haven't transferred my weight yet, the leg's ready for my body weight, and I push from this foot a little bit more to transfer the weight fully, onto my front leg. And then of course, if I was doing continuous walks, which is a rumba action, a continuous walk action, or you can do it in cha-cha too, uh, the whole process would happen again on the next leg. So I'd transfer weight and then I would relax into the, into the hip, the knee comes through, and then the leg ready to move forward again into another forward action. If you have bent knees as you do this, so if you dance with, if your knees are soft as you're walking through or just walk through like this, it looks a bit lazy and, and not great, does it? It doesn't look, it's got no definition to it. So the, the, the important thing here is to ensure that you've got one leg straight at any given time. Often you'll have two straight legs, but the leg you're standing on, the, the leg that your weight is on, is always straight in rumba and cha There are very few exceptions, but across the basic figures and the base actors, which is essentially what we're looking at here, you're gonna have that leg straight for sure. And if a leg is gesturing, so I'd call, I call this a gesture. So when I take the leg out in front of me, I gesture it. Behind me, it's the same sort of thing as well. When the leg is in that position, being gestured, I feel that leg is straight too, because I want to show a nice strong leg line through my free leg as well as having a nice strong standing leg as well. So this just in static position just makes me look better than if my knees were soft. In comparison, if I was doing something like that in ballroom, as the leg goes out, the leg I'm stood on is beginning to flex, ready to give me some power, which ultimately will turn into body flight in this instance. So there's no body flight as such in cha-cha and rumba. So we don't need to worry about that. We're not gonna pitch our weight forward or backwards. We're just gonna work the legs underneath the body. And as I said before, I feel very much as the legs are passing here, it's like a bow and arrow action. So I feel as though that this is the strong um, piece of um, wood, let's say, the bow. And then this is the string that I'm pinging backwards. It's in reverse, of course, but you get the visual idea. That's the idea I'm trying to produce. And then that leg goes out in front of me, ready for my weight to transfer onto it. 
moving backwards in that mode in uh, in that context so the same process actually but it's just in reverse completely so again i'm standing on a beautifully straight strong left leg here the right leg's out in front of me i bend the knee so it's the knee that's the first thing that works i pick that knee up and i feel like my toes are are like lead, I feel they're very, very heavy in contact with the floor. So as I pick my knee up, my foot stays in contact. That leg then passes on behind, underneath my body, behind me, gets into position before I then transfer weight fully onto it. And as I may have discussed with you before, I want to ensure that my center weight moves completely onto that foot so that I'm nicely lined up over my right leg. So I'm completely balanced on the right foot here. You don't want to get caught in this sort of position where you've got a little bit of weight in the front leg and in the back leg because now actually you're in no man's land and uh, you're going to be off balance and as you can see my weight's gone backwards. So uh, again this is the same as I talked about in episode 5 with the leg action in the ballroom. Whenever you move backwards in any dance you've always got to keep your weight forwards because Again, the way we're designed, our legs and joints and everything like that, we're designed to be forward facing and forward moving. We've got no way of dealing with excess weight going backwards behind us because our joints are all designed to carry weight going this way, you see. So once, you, once your weight gets past your foot, you're in big trouble. So the only way you can balance that or, or deal with it is to grab hold of a partner, fall over, that's a great way of dealing with it. If you fall over, then you're not off balance anymore, are you? You're literally flat on the floor. Or you, you stumble and take extra steps to, to recover. And again, you don't want to do that in Latin or ballroom, anything really, because it doesn't look very good. So yes, so the leg goes out behind you. The leg gets to its full extent before you then transfer weight onto it and you, get, you move your center, so belly button really, Keep your belly button moving backwards so that you are nicely balanced over that back leg, which is the right one here, and I can lift my left foot off the floor. You could have a succession of steps backwards and the process is gonna be the same on both legs. You get the weight transferred, then you pick up the knee, you relax to the hip as well, so the whole process starts with a hip relaxation, it's the hip action. So there's a, a relaxation into the standing leg, which is the signal for the whole process to start. So we've always got these hip actions going on in Latin, particularly in cha-cha and uh, rumba. I feel it's a bit more obvious in rumba and cha-cha where you have a settling of weight into the standing leg, through the standing leg, and it comes out of the hip. If the knee's locked, you see, so my knee's locked, the ankle's uh, locked as well here, there's only one place for your weight to go and it has to go out of your hip. So if you relax into that leg, the weight has to come out of the hip. So it instantly produces a hip action. I haven't got to try to manufacture that. Now that also then, I feel, uh, releases my other leg to come underneath me. Because at this point here, there's not as much space. If I relax that hip, I feel as though it encourages the free leg to come underneath, ready to move forward or to come backwards. Uh, going forward, I feel is easier. I, feel, I do feel this is an easier, more natural feeling. A backward action in rumba and cha-cha doesn't feel quite so natural. Again, for the reasons I've already outlined previously about us being designed to go forwards. So it's important to emphasize the, uh, I've got laces on. If you're, if you're a lady dancer, you may not have laces unless you're doing this in a practice shoe or something, but you might have a T-bar on your Latin sandal or something similar. I always feel that I lead with that part of my foot as I go forwards. So not only am I, as I said before, picking up the knee, I'm leading with the laces of my shoe before I then get the foot in front of me to stand on. Going backwards, it's the same sort of thing. I'm leaving my laces behind. I'm really lifting them and pronouncing them before I move backwards. What that does, it produces this nice action through the ankles. And these, uh, as I've said many times before, angles and curves are beautiful. It creates these beautiful angles through your body for you then to showcase the action through your legs and feet. So that creates this, uh, a beautiful leg action. And it looks, it, it looks almost like the, the leg is peeling and um, sliding beautifully through space rather than something like that. 
because it's quite easy to be told, of course, in Latin, you don't go forward on your heels in the rumba and cha-cha. So to slide your feet, of course, that's, that's a great way to ensure you don't do the wrong footwork, but it doesn't necessarily look as good as it could. So a ball flat footwork here uh, it actually starts as a very tip of the toe as the leg comes through before you then move it in front of you to become the ball flat. So it's important to understand the process and where it's, you've got to know where you're starting and where you're finishing, but you mustn't miss out the bit in the middle. Now here in terms of a, 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 a walk action forward in Latin or, sorry. So here in terms of a forward action in cha cha and rumba, I'm very mindful of what my leg's doing here. It looks nice and strong at the tip of the toe, but I'm very clear with what it's doing here as well. So this point is very important, as is that bit. And of course, then the completion of the transfer of weight. Always be aware of what your legs look like as they pass under your body, forward and backwards. So moving to the side in the rumba and cha-cha base actions is very similar. You just don't have the forward action, of course. I'm still gonna compress and uh, go through the hip of the standing leg, which, I f which releases the knee of the free leg. Normally you may, what these, these things do sometimes start from a position where both feet are underneath you. You can, of course, do this from when the leg's behind you or in front of you, but the leg will always pass underneath you before it moves to the side. So it has a process. So if you've got your feet together, you just relax through the standing leg, the hip goes out, the knee releases, and then you push the leg out to the side. Again, it reaches its, uh, it goes out straight to its final destination before you then transfer weight across. At this point, still got two straight legs. And then if I'm gonna move forward or backwards, you then relax through the standing hip, the knee releases, and then your leg goes either forward or backwards, depending on what you're going to do. But even if you're starting from this position or this position, if I do that that way, now your leg, if I'm gonna to move to the right here, I'm gonna go through the standing hip, the leg releases, comes underneath me, it passes under my body before it moves to the side. Briefly, what I'm not doing is something like that and then that, it's, there's no stop. It's a fluid action where the leg will pass underneath me and then move to the side into a cucaracha, for instance. And then I've got a nice little transfer weight in the middle here before I then may move to the right. But that might then finish with me moving backwards, for instance. So the legs always pass underneath you. You want, I, I call it home or neutral. So the legs come under, underneath you to neutral before they then move into their next position. You wouldn't do something like that. That feels a bit strange because you're bypassing the collection here when you're gonna have this beautiful angle again through your legs, through your straight leg and through your bent leg. Angles and curves, so important. Really, really important. So that will help you for the majority of the base actions in the rumba. Rumba is essentially made up of lots of walks where you're moving forward, backwards, or closing your feet. So as long as you use that process to, to move from foot to foot, you'll always look like you're doing the right thing. The important thing is that you never bend two knees. That's really important to bear in mind. We'll just look at a cha-cha-cha action now in the cha-cha. So that can be a lockstep, or it can be a cyclo-side chasse, either forward, backwards, left, or right, or diagonally, forward, left, right, backwards. So a cha-cha-cha, uh, is it, the, the essence of a cha-cha-cha is that your legs don't pass or your feet don't pass. It can be a lockstep or a chasse, but the idea is your legs don't pass. That's a cha-cha-cha, essentially, essentially. Although you can do cha-cha-cha. There are figures where you do pass your feet, but generally speaking, a cha-cha-cha is when you don't pass your feet. So let's look at a lockstep, because they're, they're, there's lots of those. And I just want to talk about how you use your legs in a lockstep. So if I'm gonna do a, a, a forward lock on my right foot, so I go through the standing leg, I go through the hip of that left leg, uh, it re releases my knee, the leg comes forward, onto a straight leg. So that's my first step of the locks, so that's the cha. Now as the other leg moves in, it's important that I don't bend the front leg at the point of cross. As my legs cross, the front leg is still straight. And this position is called a Cuban cross or a Latin cross, the point at which we the legs come together. So I've got one, two. Now as I leave, as my, as my weight comes out, 
the back leg is going to straighten, the front leg is going to bend and then straighten as it gets into position. So what you want to avoid here with a lock step, which I see a lot of people doing, is that that sort of thing happening. So when the back leg comes in, it knocks the front knee. You've got to maintain the strength in your front leg as your legs come together so that you don't get this sort of collapsing position. I'm sure you had that at school, I did. You stood there on one leg like this, having a chat with your friends, and someone comes up behind you and knocks your knee out, and then you almost collapse and fall on the floor. That's what we want to try and avoid here in a lock step. I got on the other leg. So go through the standing hip, release the knee, leg goes out in front of you, straight leg, latin cross position from the back foot and the back leg, high heel here, that heel's high off the floor, I push from the back leg, it releases my front foot, and then I finish on two straight legs. So there's a moment there where the front leg begins to bend as it moves and the back leg begins to straighten. So momentarily for a split second, you could be caught on two bent knees, but it's a split second. The idea is that as soon as you've come out of the, um, as you come out of the lock here, one leg is straightening and one leg is bending to get to its position, okay? A leg always bends under your body as it's moving. Now this same process happens here. It's not quite the same because your legs aren't passing in the same way, but this leg as it leaves me is bending to move into its final position. Now a cha-cha-cha moving to the side, again, which is a very common figure. I won't do cha-cha-chas moving forward or backwards, just the sideways ones. So if I'm gonna move to the, to the left here, I'm gonna go through the standing leg, through my right leg, the hip goes out, knee releases, and I've got cha. So at this point here, almost a bit of Elvis Presley. Uh-huh, almost. And then the, the action changes again. So I'm, this leg goes down, this heel, and this knee come up, and then I transfer weight again before finishing on two straight legs with my left foot to the side. This is actually quite hard to do well. It's not an easy figure, the cha-cha-cha, to do it with beautiful leg action, it's tough. But so with practice and effort and determination, I'm sure you can all do it. So we've got cha, 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 and you finish on two straight legs with the heel of the right foot off. Then we could do the same thing moving the other way. So we start with a softening through the left hip here, knee releases, so we've got cha, 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 at the end there, two straight legs. So the knee is bent, as you, as you first move, it goes out to the side, that leg then straightens, the other leg bends, like that, cha, cha, like this. That's the idea what's, that's happening. So again, you've only got one leg straight and one leg bent at any given time. You want to avoid this sort of thing where you've got two knees bent because it doesn't look good, especially for ladies in Latin because normally, especially in a competitive environment, ladies, you'll have your legs exposed. Men, you can hide this sometimes with your baggy trousers, which is why I've worn very fitted trousers today or jeans so that you can see exactly what my legs are doing. cha cha has said it's not easy. So relaxing through the hip, leg goes out to the side, one knee is bent, one leg is straight. Then the whole process switches as you transfer weight across. The other leg straightens, the other, the other knee bends, and then you finish with two straight legs at the very end there as you transfer weight completely. So if there's one thing you can take away from this in terms of leg action for cha-cha and rumba, it's that there's one leg that's straight and one leg bends when it passes under your body. When you're stood on a leg, it's straight, and when a leg is away from you, it is also straight. The only time it can bend is when it passes underneath your body on its way to its final destination. Now, everybody's favorite Latin American dance, the samba. It's an absolute killer in terms of technique and style sometimes, the samba. It's a very, very difficult dance to master. And it's not one that I would uh, admit to being a master of. However, I've done an awful lot of it and I have <laughs> spent a lot of time practicing it. So I do kind of know what you should be doing uh, if I can't necessarily even do it at full speed in a competition. I've done it in the competition for a long time anyway, but it's a tough one, it's difficult. Uh, now, 
Everyone has heard of, or you may well have heard of, the Samba Bounce. Now a Samba Bounce in basic figures is, is essentially just a softening of the knees towards the floor like this, and you, you have this rhythmical bounce through your whole body uh, as you're dancing the basic figures. The idea is not to be going up and down with a Samba Bounce. You do have usage of your feet, your feet do go up like this, you do release your heels when you're doing certain actions in Samba. However, I'm not trying to go up and down, I'm not producing a rise and fall like I would in a ballroom dance. So again, I'll just look at some of the basic figures that you will encounter in Samba and the principles behind what you've got to do with your legs. So a bounce action in Samba, so one of the basic figures is literally just to bounce in place. Now we use this through our medal test for the low grades, just to give you an idea of how to move and also to get you into the rhythm of the dance. It's a Brazilian dance, it's a carnival dance and it has a lot of life to it. Uh, so we need to try and portray that in our movements. Now moving forward and backwards, so you've got a base action in Samba, a forward basic and a backward basic. So as we do this, the Samba bounce that comes up out of the floor, you release your heels. As the leg goes out in front of you, you've got a straight leg. So both legs are relatively straight there, but as your weight goes into the foot, your knees will soften. Again, as you rise up and come out, you've got a straight leg. And then as you go into the foot, you again release your knees. So you have a softening. So we've got an up where the legs are straight. We go in and then we soften, straight and soften, straight, soften, straight, soften, straight, soften, straight, soften, straight, soften, straight, soften, etc. Pretty difficult that. I obviously was going up and down as well. Now eventually you would control those rise actions through your body. You'd have this lilting sort of um, rippling effect through your body so that you don't end up being too much like a jack-in-the-box popping up all the time. So these, that principle of motion with your legs you're going to use through the other figures in Samba as well. Through that I don't feel that my legs are locked like they would be in the cha-cha or the rumba, predominantly because I'm about to use the knee, so both of them at the same time actually as well. So if you lock a joint it's very difficult then to use that joint quickly. Samba is a fast dance, so you haven't really got the time to go through a locked leg into a soft knee within a matter of beats or even half a beat in some cases. So it's important that your joints are a little bit softer, a little bit more of a ballroom feeling through your knees here uh, as opposed to the rumba and the cha-cha where you're going to feel very locked on a standing leg to allow the other leg to come through. The, the action in cha-cha, whilst it's quite quick, it's quite, um, it's quite punchy, it's quite sharp. Uh, samba has that sort of feeling about it, but the, it's, the, the, the way in which you're doing it is, is different. It's, it's almost as fast or if not quicker in certain places, but there is a softness through your joints. Because of this rhythmical carnival nature of the dance, you want to showcase lots of activity and movement through your body. And that's always going to come from the floor. It's important to, to, to dance from the floor up the top of your head. You can't just dance the upper body because it's not connected to what's going on downstairs. Let's take another figure in the Samba, a Botafogo. So we would have done these sort of things, I'm sure. So this was, if we just did the Botafogo, it's going to start on a, I'm going to do it on my left leg, the knee is flexed, the other leg is straight. I'm not locking that out completely. There is a softness to it, a very slight softness, but the leg is straight. Now, as I then, as I bring the leg underneath me, both knees will bend and the heels will be released. So in a, in a pure, beautiful Botafogo, this is your Samba bounce action and you're controlling that rise through your body and your knees being flexed at the, this point here as well. So I've got a feeling of my hips coming forwards, my knees are bent, my ankles are working. As the leg goes out in front of me, it goes onto a straight leg. Tricky to balance. Leg comes underneath, two knees bent. Leg goes out in front of me on a straight leg, land on it, bent. Back leg straight. Then I switch into the little turn, I go up onto two straight legs, and then I soften back down again. This is why this is so hard. You've got to do that in a three quarter quarter one timing and it's bonkers. Same thing happens here. You go up through the middle. So I've got a tilt through my pelvis. My knees are flexed. My heels are off the floor. 
the leg goes out in front of me, it goes out straight. I'm beginning to straighten my back leg as well and I land on a bent leg. The back leg here is straight. It swings out to the side onto a straight leg, straighten the left leg as well, and then I collect my weight at the end onto a bent left leg where I started. So you're constantly passing through straight legs and bent legs here in the samba, which is why it becomes such a tricky dance to master. Luckily, the same is true in the samba as it is for the cha-cha and the rumba, in that when you are stood on a foot, you may well be on a bent knee, like I was at the beginning of these bodafogos, but the leg out to the side that is being gestured or shown, presented, whatever, is also straight. It might not be quite as lock straight as it would be in the cha-cha and the rumba, but it's definitely straight. I would not have a bent leg out the back there because that again doesn't look very good. So I'm having a straight leg. You always got to bear in mind that, that what you're presenting looks good. So you may well be thinking about what you're stood on, where you're stood, for this in, in this instance, my left leg. But I've still got to be mindful of how I look from behind or to the side here and what this leg looks like. So this has got to look good. I can't make that look dodgy. So even though I'm stood beautifully or balanced on my left leg, I've got to, I can't just have that leg out there floppy to the side and not having any purpose in it. I've got to be very mindful of what it does. And then the same will be true when I end up on the other side, having danced my Bodafogo. So when you do a Bodafogo, when you do a Volta as well, so a Volta figure, Volta step is when you come across like this. At the point where your legs are coming under your body, that's when you have this, what I call a pickup through your body. This is the Samba bounce action going on in the middle there. So I pick up through my center, my knees are bent at that point before I then cross over into my Botafogo. And then when I do a Volta, I have the same feeling that I'm picking up at that point there. I'm releasing the back heel as I cross in front. And the front leg, the front heel is off the floor also. And that's where I'm controlling my Samba bounce. And I'm not just dolloping down like that. Of course, it's very simplistic to learn the Voltas like that. We dollop down. But I'm again very aware of what my legs are doing as I do this. Now, as I step to the side, the leg straightens, then goes back through into a bent position again. When you cross over in a volta like this, you've got a Latin cross. We had these in the rumba and the cha-cha as well. Now, at the point of cross, that leg is straight. However, you very quickly soften the knee in the samba to then carry on the leg action and the hip action through the leg. Because we've got this action a lot in samba, where we have a rotary action going down through the leg, and depending on the direction of travel. So if I'm doing a volta, for instance, to the right, as, I, as after I've landed in my Latin cross position, I soften this knee, it goes forward across my foot, and then I rotate my hips to the left as I move to the right. And uh, vice versa, when I move to the left, I rotate my hips around my right foot to the right. But uh, I can only do that if I've got a soft knee. You can't do that if you lock the leg. So a volta in samba is not danced on a locked front leg. The leg straightens and then goes straight through into a flexed knee as the weight goes into it. So it's quite different in most places to the cha-cha and the rumba. So rumba and cha-cha are disciplinable of their own. The samba very much is a discipline to dance standing there on its own as well. Now a little bit about Paso Doble. Paso Doble is the representation of the Spanish bullfight and often the, you're portraying a role when you're doing the figures in, in Paso Doble. You'll be either a, a matador, a torridor, or a Spanish lady, uh, you'll never be the bull. You're never representing the bull. Sometimes the lady is a cape as well, but uh, at no point are you a bull, so we don't need to worry about that. So if you think about the, the bullfight, not a nice thing to think about, to be fair, but the idea is that ma essentially the matador, or whoever it is, the torridor, is putting on a show, presenting himself to the audience, say, how, how amazing am I? Look at me, I'm so amazing, I can hurt this poor bull. So you have to got to portray that at all times and you want to try and make sure that you look as good as you can on every single step. Essentially every single step is a presentation. 
And so the way in which you hold yourself has to, has to be appropriate to, to do that sort of thing. If you imagine you've got your little, um, little Paso Doble jacket on, little Bolero jacket covered in gems, maybe a little hat with some horns on it perhaps. Um, but anyway, so we have to present ourselves in such a way very differently to the other dances. So if we look at some of the base figures, so you've got what's called surplus, which is a position on the spot. And that literally is just a positioning of the feet. It's in place, it means, where you put your feet down in place. Now, a lot of people do this by picking their legs up and stamping or marching on the spot. It isn't that at all. It's supposed to be quite subtle. Now, the, the idea of this comes from attracting the attention of the bull. So all you're doing is you're pushing the balls of your feet into the floor. So at this point here, I've got pretty straight legs and I'm just using the balls of my feet pushed into the floor to attract that attention. So I'm not picking my knees up and doing that sort of thing at all. So it's very subtle. It's just the balls of the feet with my weight held towards the balls of the feet and lifted, of course. And your pelvis is slightly pushed forward as well in the Paso Doble. There is a slight change of the posture in the Paso Doble where you've got a lifted and pushed up forward pelvis in the base figures. When you walk in Paso, forwards, the, um, can't think of any times you would walk backwards in Paso actually. You may take a step back, but you're not going to walk backwards. So it's very much leading from the uh, pelvis. The pelvis is drawing, pulling you forwards, drawing you into that figure, and you delay the back foot. So it's a very pronounced walk in Paso. Again, as I bring the leg underneath, it still bends as it would in the rumba and the cha-cha. The difference being, of course, I'm going forward on a heel. Again, mindful of what my back leg is doing because I'm presenting that leg as I walk forwards. So it's very delayed and dragged almost behind me. The center is pulling my leg through. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a very pronounced walk with that extra shape through the pelvis. Really, that's all there is to that in the base figures. It, it's more about an attitude than it is anything else. When you're, on a, when you're stood on a foot, it's going to be straight. When the leg's behind you, it's going to be straight. It only bends when it passes underneath you. So moving sideways, you have side steps in Paso Doble to the base figures. I'm still just delaying the movement of that closing foot. And again, it's just emphasizing the attitude that you have in that dance. It's not meant to be overcomplicated in Paso Doble, especially at the, at the base level. You really just need to try and portray the style of the dance. And that is essentially a delayed movement that's coming, a walk for instance, that's coming from your center, which is delaying that back leg. That's both ladies and men as well. So it's not just for the men here or the leaders, it'll be the ladies actions too. And finally, a little bit of jive. So I suppose I've left the easiest one till last, perhaps you could say, but it's not necessarily as easy. No, none of it's easy, easy, but the jive I feel is the easiest of them all, providing you get the footwork correct. So if the footwork is correct, the chances are your legs will work how they should in this dance. Now, through the base figures, uh, you've always got a rock basic, essentially, where you have a back replace. So you're gonna go back, replace. Now, the, all I'm trying to do here is make sure that I pick my knees up. So I pick my knees up, providing I've got the right footwork, which is ball flat, ball flat. It'll do the right thing with the feet and my legs should, do the, my legs should look correct. Now, jive's quite fast. I'm sure you will realize that as well. So you need to be light on your feet and to help you to do that, I'm always feeling, feeling as I'm picking my knees up on a lead action. So if I've got, uh, if you think of the rock basic into a bit of chasse left, chasse right. So I'm picking up the knee, depending on how exuberant you want to be, depends how high the knee goes. When you do pick up a knee, you always have to make sure the foot hangs, never pick up the foot with the knee, because that doesn't look quite good. That's like you're trying to kickstart your moped, which is not in any dance. That doesn't happen at any point. So I'm always picking up the knee with the foot pointed down. And the same thing happens on a replace action here when the legs at the front, same thing again, toes pointed down, knee comes up. How high you do that is up to you really. Uh, the higher the knee, the harder the work, but it sometimes looks a bit better. The most important thing at a base level, of course, is the footwork. 
Uh, and as long as you've got a general idea about what the knees are supposed to do, that's always going to be helpful. I don't ever really think about locked legs at all in jive. You just really haven't got time. The legs pass through a bent stage to a not so bent stage, really. The legs will straighten, they'll never be locked. A locked leg can't absorb weight. Weight will escape from its easiest access point. When your legs are locked like this, like we did in the cha on the rumba, the weight always goes out of the hip. When you've got a soft knee, which you have in jive, it won't produce the same level of hip action, which is great, you don't want to do that because you're not gonna be standing on the spot for very long anyway. So a chasse action, so I'm gonna to go to the right here, I'll lead with the knee, lead with the knee, and I have this swinging action at the end of the chasse. So as I'm doing that, I feel like my hips are beginning to swing, <clears throat> and the, the softness through my legs allows me to do that. And then I'll have the same process here as well, where the hip swings eventually to the left. So as you're going to the right, I lead with my right knee. As I'm going to the left, I lead with my left knee. At the end of the action, I feel like my hip completes that journey. And then as I go to the left, I feel like my hip completes the journey. And that helps me to lower my heel as well, because it's generally the hip weight that's gonna lower your heel. So if you get your hip over your foot, push the hip down, it will lower your heel. That's generally the idea, because in jive, you need a, an upward resistance from the floor to keep you buoyant, keep you bouncy, because jive, as I said before, is very quick. I'm sure you all know that. So really, the most important thing in jive is to lead with the knee as you're moving either forward, backwards, left or right. So it's, it's on lead, the lead step of an action. Now, a back replace, kind of on its own really in that respect, because you're gonna lead with both knees, lean up, knee up. Now, as I go to the right here, I'm leading with the right knee, right knee leads transfer, left knee leads transfer. And that really will, will create a better visual look immediately for your jive. As I said, I, I would focus more on the footwork of the jive actions rather than what your legs should do. As long as you do the right footwork and then allow your knees to lead in a given direction when you're going, if you're going to the right, right knee leads, left, left knee leads, it'll look much better. And as long as your joints are soft as well, because of the speed, it'll always look a bit better. Just a final little thought about Latin, and uh, which kind of covers all of the dances, perhaps not Paso Doble necessarily, is that when your weight is on a standing leg, your other leg would always, jet, well, if you're static like this with your legs underneath you, you want the other knee to be bent with the weight on the inside edge of the foot. This always looks much more attractive. So a great little exercise to help you to get your legs looking and working in the right way is to stand perhaps with your heels together and your feet at five to one. You put your weight in one leg and release the other knee so that it rolls, well, sorry, so the weight rolls across the foot and the knee goes forward as the left hip here goes backwards. And then push into the ground with the ball of that right foot and then lock that right leg and release the left knee. Now this will help you to get the transfer of weight and to get your legs working in the right way. I felt a bit like pistons here. Now the knees should go directly forwards on the inside of your feet rather than following your feet because that isn't a nice look. That's, that's yeah, I'm not sure what that is, to be honest. So you need to make sure that the knees go forward into the space that you've created with that V shape with your feet. So I feel like my knees are going into that gap, one at a time, of course, and the weight is rolling across the feet. Now that helps you with the rumba actions, the leg comes through, that's where you wanna be. If you're doing a cha-cha-cha, that's where I am on a lock step. If I'm doing my jive chasse to the right, that's where I am there as well. Da, da, da. In a samba, I'm still doing the same thing as the leg comes up. It may be a little bit different in samba where you might go to the tip of the toes here as the legs pass. But ultimately, as I finish in this sort of position and that sort of position, this is the same, it's just a part. So if I was to bring my feet together, it would be the same. So this position is really important to find for yourself so that you know how to use your feet and how to use your legs correctly to make them look beautiful through all the movements that you will do. So there we go, there's a little bit of uh, 30 minutes or so on some Latin leg action. Hopefully that was of use, put it into practice when you can, and I'll see you again soon for episode seven. Thanks very much.
Sorry everybody, I uh, got caught downstairs preparing dinner. Unfortunately I messed up earlier. I was preparing before we started and I had to run up the shop and get some more ingredients. So anyway, there we go. So even the best of us mess up cooking. I liquidised some onions and I shouldn't have liquidised them. I need to just chop them. So anyway, that's it. So hopefully that video was useful. I mean, it was a long one, uh, a bit longer than the other videos we've done. It, it required a little bit more explanation. Obviously, you've got five dances I tried to get through. So, But uh, hopefully that cleared some stuff up for you and was useful. So please do feel free to ask me anything you like now about said video. Yeah. I'm here, I'm ready, I'm waiting. We haven't got finished yet. I've left Kelly finishing off the cooking. That's all right. Anyone got anything to say? Oh, someone's typing. Someone's typing. Someone's still typing. And I'm here for any other questions as well. It doesn't have to be about the video you just watched. Uh, we've got to have a think about the topic that I'm going to record tomorrow as well. Something, something that you would like me to do. Kelly's still not quite ready yet to uh, get filmed. I'm not sure when she's going to be ready, to be honest, to be filmed. We'll wait and see. It could be by the time that she's ready, we'll, we're back in the studio. So, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'm sure I can come up with something. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, well, Alan, I know that you've got a little tiny space at home that you can practice in. So there's no excuse for you not being able to put it into practice. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you forget about your hops, Ros, do you? Your hops and knees. I, don't, I didn't talk about any hops. Did you mean hips? Because I don't want you putting any hops in your in your in your uh, Latin. There are some actions that have a, a hopping feel, but there's no real hops. That would be quite amusing. Yeah. Maybe it's hops and barley. Maybe you're 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 doing some home brewing, while you're not allowed out too much to the pub. So. Uh, well, it's, uh, thank you very much, uh, Eileen. You've said really, Eileen has said really great. Thank you for sharing your knowledge in such a generous way. Well, I am being generous, but I'm expecting uh, there, there, there's going to be an invoice that I'm going to submit to everyone when this is all over. Don't worry, don't worry. I've got all your names and addresses. Don't worry, don't worry. Huh. No, the phone can't spell. Yeah, of course it's the phone's fault, isn't it? It's the phone's fault, Roz. Of course, yes. Damn dog is uh, is um, is barking again. He's been very annoying tonight. Very annoying tonight. He he really is pushing to get put outside to sleep. So uh, and it's not very nice tonight. It's a bit a bit uh, rainy outside. He won't like that very much. So has no one got any other questions? Because that's what I'm after now. I'm waiting for your questions related to the video or or something else or anything. Any requests? Dancing related requests. I'm not looking for any other kind of requests. <laughs> You're not drunk yet, Ros. No, no, you need to be though. Perhaps you should try a little bit harder. Try a bit harder. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. Yes, it is nice to see how your feet should be placed and you learn more each time. That's great. There is always something to practice. That's the beauty of what we do, Borum and Latin dancing, is that it's accessible to all and the learning can continue forever. And that isn't because we teach you slowly or because we just make up stuff to teach you. There's just so much to develop. I feel like I'm still learning all the time myself as well. Constantly, I've constantly wanted to refine and, and better myself as a dancer. And that's the only way, for me, that's the only, that's the only way I can keep going. It, it helps me to keep going because I'm always striving to be better. You can never just say, oh yeah, that'll do. No, it's always going to be better. And as you get older, of course, there are different challenges to, to face. And so you're always trying to, to fight with that as well. So, yeah, always. And you change your style, perhaps, as you get... I'm talking about a competitive, from a competitive background. You perhaps change your style a little bit and develop yourself in a different way. It's, um, it's uh, I suppose it's like um, weight lit. I'm going to sound a bit off topic completely, but but weightlifting to a certain degree. When you're young, you're more athletic 
and agile, but when you're older, it's from a man's perspective, typically, you are stronger and you have more endurance. So, um, yeah, you can change. It's like Mark Hughes going from being a striker to a defensive midfield player. And same as Wayne Rooney as well. He did that, didn't he? He was up the front. Now he's dropped back. Well, he's a manager now, of course, but, yeah, dropped back a bit into, into a defensive midfield sort of role. As you get older, you've got to change. You've got to adapt. You've got to... Uh, Work out what your strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, no, secret. Well, that's a good point. It all seems fairly straightforward when you do it. It is much harder to do when trying to learn. Yes, it should be relatively straightforward. The difficulty should be doing it rather than um, the dif the difficulty shouldn't be in the learning because if it's difficult to learn, then it, it's almost unachievable, really, because it needs to be simple simple things that then you have to repeat over and over and over and over and over to get better. Oh, look at that. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's been a bit stressful tonight, hasn't it? Oh, yes, it has. Yes, it has. <laughs> uh, John, um, this kind of detail. So John John said there, I wish we had this kind of detail when we first started as these basic uh, time for all steps. Well, yeah. yes and no. Uh, however, it's difficult because if you first start, when, when you get a group of people that have never danced before, you've got to make it engaging and entertaining and fun so that they come back because otherwise you, you don't hold their interest. And it's very important, especially for the likes of us who run classes, that we get people coming through in the classes. We want to keep you. That's the idea. But if we make it too difficult uh, or too... What is going on down there? He is being mental. If if you make it too detailed to start with, then there are some people, of course, maybe like yourself, uh, John, that would like it. However, there's a majority that are just wanting to just get in, have a go, do it, and have a bit of fun, and that's it done. Take it home. Maybe practice it a little bit. Maybe I maybe use it on a cruise ship or something. But that's it. There are people who want to do more, of course. And so what we what we like to do is offer that opportunity for people. But you don't know that you're going to want to learn that kind of detail until you've done it for a little while you need to do it for a while first then realize actually do you know what i want to know more about this so dancing is always about learning more and more and sometimes going backwards to then fill in the blanks and then to be able to to help you to move on and learn even more again so i don't think that you've missed out as such but you've got you've got a, you've got a, 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 a platform to work from and now you're adding the detail in because you can't add the detail until you've got so you've got all of the, the structure. So you 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 know it's um you can't ice the cake until you've baked it, but you can't bake it until you've gone out to the shop and bought the ingredients. Um, sometimes you're going to go and get better ingredients to make it taste and better. And you can't ice the cake until it's cold. No, exactly. Otherwise well. the icing melts. Yeah, there's all sorts of things. Sounds yeah. important. <laughs> so uh, Ros it's said, "What about my shoe question?" We answered that shoe question, <laughs> Ros. We answered the shoe question. You just weren't listening because you were watching the wrong video. So I went. We, Kelly chatted for quite a while about it, actually. Did I? Did, yeah, you did. You did I, I timed you. It. it was about seventeen minutes. Oh, it was not. It was about seventeen minutes. So if you watch this in a minute, because this will once we finish this shortly, this will be available to watch. You can go back and watch the beginning. It was the first thing we kind of answered, and you can get all the details about the shoe question you asked. Um, how do you become a better Latin dancer when you are as tall as you have longer limbs to deal with? Mm. It's hard. It's hard because the long, the further away your fingertips and toes are from your centre, the harder it is to control them. So people who are smaller and stubbier, let's say, for want of a better word, generally have a better control of themselves and so can move faster and they've got a lower centre of gravity. So it can sometimes make the Latin dancers look better because when you're stood on your own and you've got to move fast... Uh, it, it looks better if you're in control of yourselves. Historically, tall people have not been the best Latin dancers. Very few. Very few. It? Ian Waite was a bit of an exception, but he had his own particular Matthew style. Cutler. Matthew Cutler was quite tall. Ian's taller than Matthew Cutler. Yes, yeah. uh, they had their own kind of style, though, So, and some people didn't like it, and some people did like it, of course. A bit more elegant. and They could never be as quick or as fast as, um, let's say... Um, Shirley Ballas's partners, who are all very small. So Shirley Ballas danced with Corky Ballas, and before that, Sammy Stopford, both short fellas, about five foot six, five foot seven. So uh, much easier to be fast and compact when you're that sort of height in Latin, because Latin's quite taxing on, 
on your body because of speed stopping starting. So it's it's easier when you're smaller. Mm. I think if uh, I think Ian Waite would have struggled a bit with today's style of Latin as well. Yeah. But Ian was quite a good boring answer as well. So probably Ian probably would have gone towards boring. But I mean, Ian is six foot six, I think six foot six or six foot five. He's mass six foot seven maybe. He's massive. He's massive. <laughs> he's annoying. He's so tall. So he's um. It's di- that, I mean, he's an extreme case. It's difficult. So he did wonderfully to, 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 to deal with that. So it it's just, a great it just takes a, a bit of mindfulness, doesn't it? I think more awareness of where your arms go, where your hands go, mm. where your feet, legs, everything. Accuracy is so important when mm. you've got a lot of limbs. Now, I don't mean more than four. <coughs> so when they're long. Yeah. So um, how about some exercises to loosen up the hips? What you need, Margaret, is a yoga class or a Pilates class, not a dance class necessarily. Exercises to loosen up the hips. Um, There's a few things that I used to do when I was a kid that that worked. Um, I suppose for that there was all the Latin based things, yeah. but they look a bit silly, so I've never done them in a class. Just do, just stand on your own two feet. Stand on. Do you know it's good cooker arches? Yeah, about to say that. Stand mm. on two feet, flat feet to start with, L- locked straight legs, do some Cuban rocks for an hour that'll sort you out you want me to walk for a week not an hour <laughs> all right 55 minutes um how long does it take to achieve body isolation or for some of us it may never be possible wow. well body it's, isolation well, is it depends a, how much you practice it yeah it's a practice it? based thing actually you've just got to work at it as much as you can so if you practice six times a week obviously you're going to improve quicker uh, if you only get to do it a couple of times a week, mm. you know, and then how long you do it for and things like that. So, I mean, when we we danced fully, it was six, seven days a week, wasn't it? So Margaret says, "Show us, Kelly." No, not no, now. not now, not no. now, not now. No, uh, you'll have to. Uh, we'll have to save that, Margaret, for another time. Yes, we will. <laughs> yeah, Alan's depressed because he realizes how much he's got to learn. He's drinking some Blue Moon. Do you not mean Blue Nun? <laughs> some blue moon actually we're drinking sister moon aren't we we are yeah sister moon um, Ray thank you I'm glad it helped yes but it may have highlighted the video may have highlighted where you're going wrong but um, we always need lots of practice I think when you're lots a beginner lots of practice more this than... is kind of going back to Jonathan's comment a little bit when you're a beginner don't be too disheartened because <clears throat> you do have to do things wrong for a little while before you can correct them there's, I don't know anyone that ha- doesn't have to unlearn things, if that makes sense. I mean, when we were kids, we had to unlearn yeah. little habits that we picked up along the way. When it's, Kelly moved here from Australia, there was so much she had to unlearn to be, to be able to live with me <laughs> and to marry me as well. Mm. So many things she had to unlearn. One of the first things she had to unlearn was our Australian accent. All right, shut up. I'm trying to say something oh, all right, serious. All right, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Said in your wonderfully, uh, um, what's the woman? Audrey Hepburn voice. Anyway. I told Margaret to shut up the other day. I didn't mean that. I felt bad about that when I watched the video Aww. back. Yeah. You are harsh. I am. Uh, yes, when I watched back the uh, the recap video on Wednesday, <laughs> this week, go on, I was particularly harsh. It, it seems that way. I do apologise if I offended anyone. I don't mean to offend people. James is pretty blunt, aren't you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I, I've had a bad week, so I'm a little bit grumpy, mm. I think, perhaps. So... I kind of take it out on people. I try my best to be cheery, but I've, I'm quite down. I'm quite grumpy. So it's, uh, yeah, so I do apologise if I took it out on you, Margaret, but seriously, shut up. <laughs> anyway, I was trying to say something serious then. Go yeah. on, talk about when, seriousness. When people are learning and, and you're worried about learning bad habits and things like that, unfortunately, it's kind of part of the process because you can't do it all at once. You can't do it all perfectly straight away. So, you know, you, your focus at the beginning is learning your steps. And then once you know your steps, then it might be thinking about how you use your feet or your footwork and things like that. Or you might focus more on your posture first. So unfortunately, when you're focusing so much on one thing in order to make it better, along the way, little things will creep in. And don't forget, we all have our natural tendencies. So we have mannerisms and things that we'll naturally bring in. I don't yeah, have any mannerisms. Into dancing. So it's, yeah, oh, don't, I mean, don't be too disheartened <laughs> if you think, oh my gosh, there's so much to learn. Because... You never stop learning. We still learn all the time, don't we? I said that just before you came up, actually. Yeah. I said that we're constantly adapting. And yeah. as we get older, of course, you have to then adapt again. So mm, it changes yeah. what you do and you have to relearn things to do it in yeah. a certain different way. Yeah. There's things that, that I learned 
years ago, I mean, before I even met James, and then we, we'd be practicing, and they'd be like, oh, that's what, that's what they meant mm. way back then, when I was a kid, you know, and it took me all that time suddenly to, to fully, I, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't understand, but to fully understand it and think, mm, you know, so it, it's, yeah, dancing is, is a forever thing. It's not, um, you can't do it all perfectly straight no. away. No, no. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier. Some of the people, um, so those people that do Argentine tango, for instance, mm. I think to dedicate yourself to that is easier mm -hmm. because you've got, I'm not suggesting that it's easier as a dance, but no. so you've only got one dance to focus on mm -hmm. because that video well, I've just done. There's different styles of Argentina, isn't there? E yeah, you've got Milonga and then you've got something else. Alan's going to comment and tell me. Alan will be I'm able sure. to tell you, yeah. Uh, but, but essentially you're do, doing one dance form. Yeah, so if, let's so, say, you, you, you learn one type of salsa, then you can focus completely on that. It's a mm. little bit easier mm. to... If you did that six days a week, yeah, you, then you're going to you, learn very quickly. You'll learn you know? quicker. So you'll you could quicker. argue that perhaps the way to learn is to focus on one dance for a long time. But if you're, do, if you're doing it for a social reason then you're only ever going to be able to do one dance for a long time. Mm. So it's a double-edged sword, isn't it, that sort of thing? I think mm. what you need to do with your teachers, finding your good ones, yeah. is identify the similarities and the things that cross over in all the dances so you can focus well, that's on That's what those. we try to do all the time. I know, I know, I know. That's yeah. what I was implying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's important to find parallels and similarities yeah. between the dances. So you focus on one aspect of you as a dancer or as a movement mm. and then you make that better. Yeah. And it improves all your dances. Yeah, well, and posture. Try not to th yeah, posture, absolutely. I mean, posture is for yeah. every single type yeah. of dance, isn't it? But I mean, there, there's different postures for different styles of dancing, like Argentine tango, yeah. you hold differently. Yeah. But the basic principles of standing up well is universal, mm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's then learning how to adapt your posture for each dance, which is different. So, mm. the, But the foundations of good posture are the same throughout. So you can't, you know... If you understand that, at least then you've got a starting block on which you can then build to adapt to each dance. Leg action is the same, isn't it, really? Mm. The difference being perhaps tango. There we go, he's replied. Milonga vowels. I don't know what vowels mean. I don't know what vowels got to do with it. I mean, did Valerie invent it or something? <laughs> is it, should it not be vowels milonga? If it's Valerie's milonga. Milonga vowels and Argentine. Tango traditional and, and nuevo. Nuevo. So I've that, had no experience so with So if you were to say they were all separate, that's three. Mm. We, we focus on ten. Yeah. And if you do ten, the paso yeah. is very different to rumba and, and jive. Yeah. And jive is very different to waltz, which is you, different to Venus waltz. If you look waltz. at, say, ballroom, there's sim definitely similarities in, in all the five dances, yeah. but you can relate waltz, foxtrot and quickstep to each other. Swing dances. Yeah, very, very well. Very pure swing dances. Yeah. In uh, Latin, you can relate cha-cha rumba, for instance. Mm. Well, yeah. I suppose it, there's there are yes, of course. It's, it's, it's identifying what is the same in all the dances and focusing on that to get yourself yeah. as a better better dancer rather than um, body isolation. Yeah. is something that you'll use in every Latin dance, for instance, isn't it? Yep. You know, so if you can isolate different parts of your body, then that's going to help you in all the dances. Yeah. So yeah, look look for the things that improve everything mm. overall. And then as you get better at that, then it's easier, I think, to focus in and hone in on the, the little differences between each dance. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But there's, I don't think there's any right or wrong. You know, it, it's, it's all a bit of a journey and you have to just... The way I think, when I look at people dance, I look at the thing that stands out as being the most wrong. So the thing that looks... The, I, don't, I don't want to say bad. <laughs> but the thing that stands out as being what you notice because it looks wrong and then you focus on that first and then when that gets better something else will come out and hit you in the face and say well that's not quite right won't it mm. don't you think you, yeah. you look at couples and you notice something and that'll be it. the thing that stands out the most that's what you have to focus on and fix first mm. yeah for any couple or individual dancer yeah if you get a competitor coming in to a certain degree that's yeah well for anyone really yeah, yeah, if yeah, someone yeah. wants to do a medal and they come in they, all their latin they just do all on heels well, that's yeah, what course. you have to fix first yeah. You know, or if they come in, they stand like this. That's what you have to fix first. Not in the middle. I disagree. Oh well, in a, yeah. Um, they got yes. to do footwork first. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you've got a structure. You've got to stick to a structure to achieve a certain goal. But uh, generally speaking, 
if there's no ultimate goal other than just to dance better, then you focus mm. on what is. So that, that's kind the, of the, yeah. Like, what, yeah. Yeah. First, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sarah Ball said we should all get together post lockdown for a freedom party. Don't worry, we have that mm. planned as soon as we are able. Don't Absolutely. worry, we'll do something. Don't worry, we've got <laughs> we've we've got the facility. Don't worry, it'll be happening in Fairham, in Fairham, for sure. Um, we've been waiting to do one since last February. <laughs> so we used to do them. We used to have a, a a dance every month, and then a big one every three months. I haven't won at all since February. Which, it does feel um, strange. It really feels strange. Yeah. But I think the, th- the thing yeah. that's strange is all your focus and tension, attention is on those sorts of things, mm. isn't it, all the time? Because mm. we were always thinking about six months ahead all the time. Yeah. And then suddenly it's just like... Mm. I can't plan for anything. You can't? can't plan for anything. It's, not, it's just ridiculous. I think that's the, hard, the hardest part, is, is thinking I can't yeah. plan ahead. We've... Um, I, I'm oh, sure many of you know... Fowls equals wolves. Yeah. No, I saw, yeah, yeah. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, I do prime. Kelly and I do prime comps with our students and stuff. So uh, it's just this year's. Uh, I think this year again is going to be written off. Nightmare. No, no abroad comps at all. And some of these organisers keep pushing the date on, pushing the date on. And uh, it's it's never ending. Just say forget it. Just do it next year, 2022. Yeah. We're going to do our comp next year. But every circumstance. Right, of course we every, can. Every circumstance is different, isn't it? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every promoter's got to play it by ear. Yeah. Yanis Fashion says Kelly is absolutely amazing, including the accent. Oh. <laughs> what do you Which want? Which accent? <laughs> what are you after? Because she hasn't got anything. She's just being nice. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Ross. Says she's with us. Whatever we. What, uh, what's she saying? You. We're with you always. Well. She sounds like uh, that. Sounds to me like Obi Wan Kenobi. Does Remember, it? Luke. The Force will be with you always. <laughs> so are you like a James force, Ross? A, James is a massive Star Wars fan, if you didn't know. Uh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Mum says that uh, all the raffle prices <laughs> went past their silver date, so she ate them. Oh, right. Fair okay. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not yeah. sure anyone would have wanted them if they're out of date. No, well, they, I think, to be honest, most of them are out of date before we give them away anyway. So. <laughs> Don't say that. That's not true. <laughs> they're all from the bargain. We get, we get they're all from the bargain basement stuff. Yeah, at least, well, yeah. Often we give away uh, Christmas presents that we don't like and stuff, don't we? No, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, we know someone who does. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, right, um... So we, I don't know what we're doing tomorrow yet. I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I'll work for the lecture. Mm. Yeah. I'll come up with something, I'm sure. I'm running really? out. Of, I'm not running out of ideas, but it's just, they just get a little bit more uh, complicated because <laughs> I've kind of covered all the simple stuff. Mm. Now I've got to get a bit more complicated. Have a look at what Deep. you've done and then um, that might give you the lead on for the next thing. Yes. Mm. I'm going to let him out in case he needs to go to toilet. Okay. All right. Don't, yeah, you're not talking about me, are you? Yeah, do you need to go to the toilet? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Shall I let you out? Is the food in the in the um? It's in oven. the oven. The yeah. time is on. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I'll come up with something. Oh, thank you, Sarah. It's very kind of you. It's very kind of you. Oh, that's nice. Thank well, we you. do our best. <laughs> We're trying to dominate the world, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting, hungry hawks. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, let's. Um, I don't think we've got anything else to say. I need a haircut desperately. I'm gonna yeah, have to, I, need, I, I desperately need I'm going to have to get you to do some trimming, I think. Oh no, you don't want me to do it. Not massively, I think. I just, don't, do you know why I don't want to cut his hair? Because he is so fussy. I know whatever I do will be wrong. No, I won't tell you. No. no. Yeah, just a little trim. I, I, I'll. We'll find a way. We'll find a way. Perhaps I can get we can get Mark to give us an online tutorial. Oh, no. oh god! <laughs> he can talk me through. Oh it. no! Do this bit. Do this yeah. bit. Do this bit. No, I'm not just. You want just me to dance for you, Roz, for thirty minutes. That's not the kind of video that I want to put out online. <laughs> really? Remember, he's doing these on his own. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going on video yeah. yet. Yeah. No, you won't, Diane. You won't. No, you won't. Right. Be careful what you say. John's a health and safety manager. What What's say that, about what? What's that referring to? I don't know what you're referring to, Margaret. Oh, I think she means about the raffle prizes. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's only, they're only best before. They're not. It's not, <laughs> isn't it? It's not best. It's, it's best about, before. Only about a week out. I don't know. Yeah. 
We don't. And I'm not selling them. Oh, stop it! It's a then, raffle. Shut up! <laughs> They're not out of date. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, you look like a Neanderthal the best of times. So uh, yeah, I bet mm-hmm. you, you bet that hair's wild as you like. <laughs> Put on a ponytail. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we'll go now. We're going to go. Mm-hmm. I think we'll go. And uh, drinking tomorrow. Drink. What does that mean, Renata? What are you, what are you talking about, Renata? Drinking tomorrow. She's I don't know what you... Tomorrow. You're drinking now or drinking tomorrow? We're going to drink both days. Oh, you're amazing because you're drinking. I don't know. Can you clarify? Anyway, so I know... I, I, I'm sure you are joking, Margaret. I, <laughs> I don't take it all seriously. Just to reiterate, if you can like and subscribe our YouTube videos, and if you watch anything, anything you like... And try and get as many other people, uh, Just perhaps. get as many other people to like them and watch them. Even people who have not interested in dancing, make them watch the videos. <laughs> comment and like as well, so comment. Because even, uh, even when we get back to normal, we're going to try and keep producing some content yeah. online. Well, I've, well we've, um, we've used this time, I've used this time to learn a load of new skills. And also, we've early on last year when uh, we um, didn't know quite what was going on we bought some kit so I bought the new camera and a couple of tripods so we're going to make use of it as much as so we can so we need to so, it needs to, uh, yeah. needs to pay yeah, for exactly. itself so yeah so that's the idea we want to do as much as we can and I've learnt these new skills now like editing skills and stuff so I might as well use them as best I can yeah yeah. plus I think just for future in case mm. it happens again I yeah. think we're going to need it so. yeah mm. so maybe I'll do a little uh, 30 minute thing tomorrow about Adobe Premiere and how to edit your own no. dance videos. No, he's not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. No. I'm not going to do that. Stick to the, the stuff you're an expert at. Okay. All right, thanks, darling. Right, <laughs> okay, I'm going to clear off now. Renata, just message us privately about what on earth you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone. It's been a, a, a pleasure, as always, to, uh, to join you on a Friday night. Thanks for stopping by. I hope the uh, lecture was useful. And, uh, of course... It'll be online momentarily so that you can relive it and watch it again and again and again with me in tight jeans. Well worth it, I think. Well worth it. Slightly out of focus, though. Soft focus, which I'm disappointed about. Anyway, let's call it a night, shall we? Okay. Thank so you. it's uh, it's good night from me. It's good night from him. Yeah. So And we'll see you... Well, I'll see you next Wednesday. Don't forget Mateo and Jessica are on Sunday night. And stretching on Tuesday. Stretching on Tuesday. Me on Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Matteo and Jessica Latin Fusion again on Thursday back to us again next Friday before you know it it'll be uh, episode 7 of Learning 30 so I might take off 10 minutes because last night's was 40 next week might be 20 yeah <laughs> alright I'll find something I'll come up with something wonderful for you to learn I don't know what it is yet but we'll come up with something anyway I'm going to go now I've had enough I'm going to have me dinner <laughs> see you later everyone bye take have a good care. weekend bye now bye bye bye